On this video, I will discuss about deductive and inductive reasoning. Deductive and inductive are the two major types of reasoning. They refer to the process by which someone creates a conclusion as well as how they believe their conclusion to be true. Deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning requires one to start with a few general ideas called premises and apply them to a specific situation. When we say premise, a premise is a statement or idea that is accepted as being true and that is used as the basis of an argument. The concept of deductive reasoning is often expressed visually using a funnel. A funnel that narrows a general idea into a specific conclusion. Recognize rules, laws, theories, and other widely accepted truths are used to prove that a conclusion is right. Example, deductive reasoning in theory. When A is B and C is A, therefore, we can conclude that B is C. Another example applying theories. You notice something specific about a localized case that all right triangles you see in your textbook have two acute angles. From that, you draw a universal conclusion that all right triangles have two acute angles. That conclusion that all right triangles have two acute angles is not reliable. Why? Because you base it on the thin evidence of a few triangles from your textbook. You can test the conclusion using mathematical proof relying on your storehouse of knowledge of axioms, postulates, and theorems proven by other mathematicians. So now, let us prove that all right triangles have two acute angles. So the possible premises are all triangles have three interior angles that sum to 180 degrees. So that is the interior angle theorem. For premise number two, right triangles have exactly 190 degree angle and two angles that add to 90 degrees. So that is the definition of a right triangle. From these two premises, we can now prove that the two remaining angles of a right triangle will be acute. In practice, the most basic form of deductive reasoning is the syllogism. When we say syllogism, syllogism is a formal argument in logic that is formed by two statements and a conclusion which must be true if the two statements are true. Example, for our premise one, all muscles are made out of living tissue. Then premise two, all humans have muscles. Then we can make our conclusion, therefore, humans are made out of living tissue. So as we can see on this syllogism, it states that the premises prove the conclusion, not to justify it. Then, deductive reasoning is meant to demonstrate that the conclusion is absolutely true based on the logic of the premises. Now, let us compare the following syllogism. 
All musical instruments make sounds. Airplanes make sounds. Therefore, airplanes are musical instruments. And another one, all art is an imitation of nature. Music is art. Therefore, music is an imitation of nature. The syllogism on the left contains two objectively true premises, but its conclusion is false. On the other hand, the syllogism on the right takes premises that overlap and uses them to prove that a statement is definitely true. Although deductive arguments rarely come in the exact form of a syllogism, the same thought process can be used to evaluate their strength and create counter arguments. That is deductive Reasoning. Inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning uses a set of specific observations to reach an overarching conclusion. It is the opposite of deductive reasoning. This is commonly shown using an inverted funnel or a pyramid that starts at the narrow observations and expands into a wider conclusion. A conclusion you reach using inductive reasoning is called a conjecture. What do we mean by conjecture? A conjecture is an opinion or idea form without proof or sufficient evidence. There is no equivalent to a syllogism in inductive reasoning, meaning there is no basic standard format. Inductive reasoning is different than proof. It can be used to make predictions, but it should never be used to make certain claims. Inductive reasoning is a reasoning that is based on patterns that you observe. If you observe a pattern in a sequence, you can use inductive reasoning to decide the next successive terms of the sequence. Example, find a pattern of the sequence. Use the pattern to find the next three terms in the sequence. We have 2, 4, 7, and 11. From the given sequence we have, observe that the difference between 4 and 2 is 2, and the difference between 7 and 4 is 3, and so on. The difference between the consecutive numbers is increased by 1. So, add 5 to 11 to get the next term of the sequence. We have 11 for plus 5, which is equal to 16. Now, add 6 to get the next term and so on. Therefore, the next three terms in the sequence will be 16, 22, and 29. Now, let us look at an example of inductive reasoning in practice. We have, my neighbor's cat, he says at me daily. At the pet store, all the cats hiss at me. Therefore, all cats probably hate me. Just as deductive arguments are meant to prove a conclusion, inductive arguments are meant to predict a conclusion. They do not create a definite answer for their premises, but they try to show that the conclusion is the most probable one given the premises. On this example, there are several factors that could contribute to a cat's reaction toward the arguer. 
perhaps she wears a deodorant that cuts dislike, or maybe she is hostile towards cut and neglected them to mention it. But, considering neither of these factors are acknowledged in the premises, these are not considered the most probable conclusions. The most probable conclusion, given the premises that have been supplied, is that cats hate the arguer. An inductive argument is either considered weak or strong based on whether its conclusion is a probable explanation for the premises. Now, let us compare the following arguments. We have an argument to the left. The cost of college has been increasing over the past several decades. Therefore, higher taxes on the rich are probably the best way to help middle class Filipino thrive. And on the other side, the past five Marvel movies have been incredibly successful at the box office. Therefore, the next Marvel movie will probably be successful. Once again, the reasoning on the left is weak, while on the right is strong. On the left, two statements made are likely true on their own. But the first premise does not predict the second to be true. Since there is no obvious correlation between the two, then we can say that the argument is weak. On the other hand, on the right, the premise identifies a pattern and the conclusion provides a logical continuation of this pattern without exaggeration. Thus, the argument is strong. So that is inductive reasoning. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something.